Welcome to an introduction to managerial accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this podcast, we shall be looking at process costing and how we treat cost flows through departments during production, including the use of equivalent units and the reconciliation of units and costs. With job costing, we were able to record direct materials, direct labour and manufacturing overhead for each job. In process costing, we are looking at businesses that do not have distinct jobs or batches, so that the production can be considered as continuous. This means that the easiest way to look at costs is to consider flows during an accounting period. To do this, we make use of average cost measurements in terms of units of production. Since there may be several stages in the production process, we divide the process into departments. The principles for job costing and process costings still require that we consider a raw materials inventory, a work in progress inventory, a finished goods inventory, and a cost of goods sold account. The flow of costs through job costing involves taking costs of materials, labour and overheads as debits to work in progress and to transfer completed jobs out we then credit work in progress with the cost of the completed job and debit the finished goods with the same amount. How will process costing differ? You can see that we are still using the same accounts here. Debits to work in progress still consist of raw materials, direct labour and manufacturing overhead. When transferring the costs out, then the amount is based on the number of units completed multiplied by the average cost per unit. This is the figure that will be transferred in or debited to the finished goods account. Since the processes to complete a good can vary from one to many, then with process costing the business breaks down production into departments and keeps track of the costs flowing through these departments. Our example uses Green Sands, a small company producing furniture for home assembly from timber obtained from sustainable forests. To carry out costing, the business has identified two departments, which occupy a different space within the same building. The preparation department takes timber as a raw material and cuts the required pieces for home assembly of furniture. The assembly and packing department takes pieces for an item of furniture, adds a pack of screws and glue, then packages the item for sale. Costs are tracked for these two departments. The diagram shows the flow of costs between the two departments. The preparation department will have inputs, debits of direct material, direct labour and manufacturing overhead. The output is the cost to transfer to assembly and packaging. The assembly and packaging department will have inputs, the cost to transferred from preparation, plus the direct materials, direct labour and manufacturing overhead added at this stage. The cost of the completed items will be the cost that is transferred to finished goods. The costs refer to transfer of completed items between the departments and eventually to the finished goods. At the start and end of any period there are going to be items that are not complete and the cost of these items has to be determined. Process costing makes use of the concept of equivalent units. If an item was only 25% complete, then it would take four of these items to make up an equivalent of a completed unit. The equivalent units for direct materials, direct labour and manufacturing overhead are treated separately. Equivalent units are used to determine cost per unit. Cost per unit will still be total cost divided by completed units and will refer to a period. The costs will be determined as the cost of work in progress at the start of a period plus the costs incurred during the period divided by total for the units completed plus equivalent units for the work in progress. We will now work through an example to show how the calculations are carried out. First we need some basic information for the starting point. Green Sands needs to have a measurement for units and they have determined that most items use about a square metre of timber. This is being used as the unit measurement. 
Anything in process is regarded as 50% complete. This is a simplified calculation, since any particular item can be between 1% and 99% partially completed. At the start, there are 1,000 square meters treated as 50% complete. 4,000 square meters are started during the period, and 3,000 square meters are completed during the period. The raw material cost is $1.50 per square meter of timber, and manufactured overhead is calculated on the basis of $2 for every dollar of labor cost. At the end of the period, there are 2,000 square meters that are partially complete. We are almost ready to start calculations. Direct labor of $5,000 is included in the starting cost. Starting costs then consist of $1,500 for raw materials, $5,000 for direct labor, and $10,000 of manufacturing overhead. What is added during the period? Direct labor was measured at $10,000, so we have costs during the period of $6,000 for raw materials, $10,000 for labor, and $20,000 for manufacturing overhead. Our task is to determine the cost per equivalent unit to use for transferring costs out. We have starting costs that we have already determined as $1,500 materials, $5,000 labor, and $10,000 overhead, making a total of $16,500. During the period, we have added $6,000 for materials, $10,000 for labor, and $20,000 for overhead. The totals at the end of the period will be $7,500 for materials, $15,000 for labor, and $30,000 for manufacturing overhead. This gives a total of $52,500 for the period. Once raw materials are drawn from inventory, they are treated as 100% complete. The labor and overhead costs are treated as 50% complete. A business will determine how to treat materials, labor, and overhead for partially completed units. Not every business will use the figures that Green Sands have chosen. So, let us look at units complete at the end. For materials, labor, and overhead, the figure will be 3,000 units. When we look at work in process, we have 2,000 units based on raw materials, but since labor and overhead are treated as 50% complete, then the units for labor and overhead are 50% of 2,000, which means a figure of 1,000 units for each. So we add these together to determine the units at the end. 5,000 for materials, 4,000 for labor, and 4,000 for overhead. For the costs of the units, we need the figures for costs that we determined earlier. Then we divide these costs by our units. For materials, we have 7,500 divided by 5,000. For labor, 15,000 divided by 4,000. And for overhead, 30,000 divided by 4,000. We now have our costs per unit. For materials, the cost per unit is $1.50. For labor, it is $3.75. And for manufacturing overhead, it is $7.50. So the total cost per unit is $12.75. Since we completed 3,000 units, then the cost to be transferred out is 3,000 multiplied by $12.75, the cost of each unit. This gives a figure of $38,250 to be transferred out. The journal entry for the calculations we have made is the entry to transfer the costs for work completed from preparation to assembly and packaging. We debit assembly and packaging with $38,250 and credit preparation with $38,250. Now we need a value for work in progress at the end of the period, which will then become the starting costs for the start of the next period. We have 2,000 units for work in progress, which will be for materials, labor, and overhead. However, we need these in equivalent units. So we have 2,000 units for materials, but the labor and overhead are treated as 50% complete. 
so we only have 1000 units for labor and 1000 units for overhead. We already have our costs for equivalent units. For materials we have $1.50, for labor $3.75 and for overhead $7.50. This makes our figures for the end $3,000 for materials, $3,750 for labor, and $7,500 for overhead. This gives us a value of $14,250 for work in progress at the end of the period. Finally, we need some reconciliation to be carried out. For units, we have 1,000 units of work in progress at the start plus the 4,000 that were started during the period, giving 5,000 units. At the end, we have 3,000 units completed at the end, plus the 2,000 units in progress, making 5,000 units again. Our units are reconciled. Now we need to reconcile the costs. We determine the costs at the start and the costs added during the period. The total was $52,500. The value we transferred, plus the cost of work in progress at the end, should reconcile with the $52,500. We transferred $38,250 of costs, and we have $14,250 of work in progress, making a total of $52,500 the costs are reconciled. This ends our podcast on process costing, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.